Hello, Antioch Community High School. I'm Caleb Kozorborski, and this is my weekly weather forecast number three. For the week of September 25th, 2023, expect very nice temperatures. Fall temperatures, your averages, got high 60s for most of the week. You kind of get a slight increase in your temperatures near the weekend. Um, it's for the lows to be in the 50s. Nothing too bad when you walk up to school. And for the game, Wakanda Bulldogs versus our Antioch Secoids, fall like condition, it should be very comfortable. Going on, temperature outlook, for it being these kind of temperatures, it is above average, as shown by the SPC. We are in, this is a 60 contour, 60% of temperatures being above average. Here is the precipitation outlook. We have, I don't expect too much rain, so do they. And we are still in a abnormally dry condition. I expect it to go up, which is not very good. To the oceans, tropical outlook, keep it quick this time. We have Nigel, forecast to go maybe around Iceland, Greenland area. We have a little area that may become a threat, who knows? But I want to talk about this right here. About 50% chance of forming, and if it does form, it will be a threat to the East Coast, particularly Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, that kind of area. Expect some heavy rain with that, not too much wind. But I, what I want to do this week is cover the fall and winter outlook. So we're going to have a cold winter, we're going to have a mild winter, who knows. But what I can do is I can forecast it. Here is the NOAA Coral Reef Watch, and basically it tells us are parts of the ocean above or below average? What I want to cover is right here. This is, is the El Nino Southern Oscillation. Because it's above average, we classify it as an El Nino. If this was below average, like last year, it would be a La Nina. And over here, this is what we call the PDO. But basically, because these temperatures are very above average, and this is kind of below con compared to this, we can expect a bit more hotter weather along with the El Nino also promoting that hot weather. Over here is the forecast for our, our winter and fall. So over here we have October, December, December and February, setting to be around two to one and a half degrees, which would mean that it would be in the threshold of it being a strong El Nino. Now what this means is we can expect warm and or even dry conditions. If you're in the south, expect a bit more stormy conditions, even with the threat and possibly a tornado or two. Here is the Gulf of Mexico, which I'll get to right now. Because temperatures are above average, and they've been above average for most of this year, especially during hurricane season, most of these temperatures will be a lot above average during the winter. It's going to reside. It's going to stay there. And what that means for the U.S. is that more moisture and more temperature will be pulled from the Gulf of Mexico up. So we can expect a lot warmer winter with that. Now here are the September 1st, 2010 and March 1st, 2011 tornado reports. Basically, what I'm using this for is this fall and winter was a lot like ours or what it's forecast to be. So I want to take a look at some tornado reports to try and get you an understanding of what this will be. Basically, is it a lot of southern activity? Might be a second opportunity right of here, central to southern Illinois and also Missouri. But there's a hot spot over here for a ton of tornadoes, not too much strong tornadoes, but Texas. We think mo most activity should be down south in the Dixie area, we call it. So basically, for the forecast, El Nino, we have warmer winter and decreased chance of severe weather because it all kind of stays south through the jet stream. Negative PDO, which is what we're in right now with the hot temperatures near Japan. That means that we get warm temperatures and also decreased precipitation. And for the above average Gulf temperatures, warmer winter. Pretty simple. And that is my weekly weather forecast, number three.